Hello, welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss how to run a TTR test using a Trax without a TSX303. Let's get started. To select the Turns Ratio app, you can select the Apps option on the home screen. You will be able to see the Turns Ratio app under the Power Transformer tab. This is what the Turns Ratio app looks like. Let's go over all the options that you see here. So on the top left corner, you can see the shortcut for the home screen. You can access the test report by selecting this option. You can access the other apps by selecting this option. You can bring up the test settings by selecting this option. If you select this option, you can see information about the instruments like the serial number, the software version, and the temperatures of different internal components. You can bring up the connection diagram by selecting this option. You can save the test data by selecting this option. You can create a new turns ratio test by selecting this option. You can view the test results in a graphical format by selecting this option. You can delete results. You can add comments if you want. Here you have shortcuts to other tests uh, like the winding resistance test. And you would need to hit the play button to start the test. In the upper half of the screen, you will need to uh, enter certain relevant information uh, before you start the test. So you will need to select the vector group here and you will be able to see the uh, vector diagram corresponding to that group. Here you will need to enter information about the taps. So which winding has the tap changer, what's the tap changer type, uh, how many taps are there, and the extreme tap voltages. Here you will select the test voltage. The test voltage can be uh, selected by clicking on that drop down and you can go up to a maximum of 250 volts. You will also need to enter the rated voltages uh, for both windings. This is the test section where you can see the test data. Uh, if you start from the left, you can see the connections uh, that would need to be made for testing different phases. You can see the tap position. Uh, you can see that there's a column for the corresponding tap voltages. Uh, there's a column for the test voltage. And you can also see the calculated TTR values at different taps. And then uh, the last four columns uh, is where the test data would populate. And that includes the measured turns ratio values, the percentage error, with respect to the nameplate TTRs, uh, excitation current, which is the current which the transformer draws when you run each measurement. Uh, phase is the phase deviation between the applied voltage and the measured voltage. If you select the test settings option, this is the window that would come up. Let's go over each of these points. So under preferences, you have ratio uh, display parameter. Do you want to see the turns ratio? or do you want to see the nameplate ratio. Phase deviation can be displayed either as degrees or radians or centiradians. You can also see the maximum acceptable per stage ratio error limit, which is set at a half a percent. Voltage unit is set to KV, and those are the units in which the rated voltages would be displayed uh, in the app. There is also a checkbox to enable or disable the frequency uh, column. The connection order settings have two options. It's either test by tap or test by winding. If you set it to test by tap, then you would be able to uh, see the test rows in the order uh, of tap position. Uh, but that what I mean is the test rows would be displayed. Uh, uh, for example, they would be displayed in this manner. You would see tap one, phase A, B, C, tap two, phase A, B, C, uh, tap 3, phase A, B, C, so on and so forth. If you set it to test by winding, then the test rows would be displayed uh, in the following manner. You would see phase A, tap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, phase B, tap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, phase C, tap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the checkbox that you see there, which says reversed order for next connection, it's applicable for test by winding. Uh, let's say you set it to test by winding and you check that box, what would happen is um, the, test the test rows would be displayed in the following manner. You would see um, 
phase A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Phase B, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Phase C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Under test parameters, you can select the test frequency, uh, which is set at 60 hertz here. And you would see a checkbox there, which is grayed out. Uh, right now, it, it says auto winding switch. And that checkbox becomes available when you are using a switch box, the TSX with the uh, tracks. To run the turns ratio test without a switch box, we need to use a pair of Kelvin cables and a pair of sense cables. The Kelvin cables would run from the tracks to the high voltage winding and the sense cables are connected from the tracks to the low voltage winding. The very first step is to run the ground lead from the tracks main unit to the ground of the transformer under test. When the TTR app is selected, the LEDs for the TTR inputs and outputs light up. Here I'm connecting the measure ends of the Kelvin cables to channel 1 and the sense cables are being connected to channel 2. The generator ends or the power ends of the Kelvin cable are now connected to the TTR output which is the 250 volt AC source. You can use the strain relievers provided on those cables and hook them up on that little ring provided on the tracks main unit. I'm going to start off with the A phase. To test on the A phase, I'm going to take the Kelvin cables and connect them on the H1 and H3 bushings. The red one goes on H1 and the black one goes on H3. Polarity is important for turns ratio testing, so make the connections correctly. The sense cables go on X1 and XO bushings respectively. In the turns ratio app, you're going to start by entering some relevant information there. You can see that the vector group is already uh, selected as DYN1. I'm going to change the tap information for the secondary winding here. There are no taps on the secondary winding, so the number of taps is set to 1. And the extreme tap voltages would be the same and equal to the nominal voltage. I'm going to change the nominal values for the primary and secondary winding on the right there. And I'm going to, uh, in the middle section, I'm going to switch to primary winding and I'm going to change the extreme tap voltages for the primary winding. The primary winding has a DTC type tap changer and it has five taps on it. Uh, when I change these extreme tap voltages, you will see in the test section below that the intermediate tap voltages are going to change. So this is the secondary turns ratio screen and um, you can switch between the primary and secondary. You can run the test uh, on either screen. It doesn't matter as long as the tap position is selected correctly. So the connection order setting has two options, either by tap or by winding. I switch to by tap here and you can see that the test rows are arranged in the order of the tap position. So it's tap one, A, B, C, tap two, A, B, C, so on and so forth. If the tap voltage values that populate in the test section don't match with the nameplate values, you can manually edit those values. Typically that won't happen, but if there's a little bit of a difference, you can always edit the values. So I could either run the test on tap position three on this particular screen, or I could just switch to the secondary. Since I'm testing on the nominal tap, I could do it on either screen. If I was testing on a tap other than the nominal tap, then I would only need to, I would only be able to run this correctly on the primary test screen. So this is our measurement on phase A, the first measurement. You can see the values populating there uh, on, the, on the test screen. And at the end of the measurement, we get the TTR. To test the B phase, the Kelvin cables are connected on the H2 and H1 bushings and the red sense cable is moved from the X1 bushing to the X2 bushing. Having changed the connections on the transformer, now I'm going to run the measurement on the B phase.
To test the C phase, the Kelvin cables are now connected on the H3 and H2 bushings and the red sense cable is moved from the X2 bushing to X3 bushing. Now let's run the measurement on the C phase. That concludes the turns ratio test. You can now save the test data there. And then if you want to look at the results on the report, we click on the report icon and there is our test results, the turns ratio test results. This concludes how to run a TTR test using a Trax without a TSX303. Visit the Megger YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.